Singer Andrea Day performed Lift Every Voice and Sing at the start of the Super Bowl yesterday. And it's widely thought of as the black national anthem. Now, the fact that this song was even performed is apparently upsetting some conservatives. And that backlash has led to backlash toward them because this is America. If you're not offended and if you're not engaging in backlash, what are you doing with your life? So before we get into the backlash, here's a little history about the song itself. So Lift Every Voice and Sing has a short Super Bowl history, but the song itself has been around since 1900 when it was first performed by a choir of 500 school children in Jacksonville, Florida. It was written by James Weldon Johnson, who who considered the piece a hymn. Now, the song was written as a poem to commemorate Lincoln's birthday, and then the piece became a song. So James Weldon Johnson referred to the work as a national hymn, but his work spread and was later popularized as a black national anthem. The song is nicknamed the black national anthem because it speaks to racial injustices faced by the black community in the United States. At the turn of the 20th century, Johnson's lyrics eloquently captured the solemn yet hopeful appeal for the liberty of black Americans, according to the NAACP, where Johnson was a leader. Set against the religious invocation of God and the promise of freedom, the song was later adopted by NAACP and predominantly or prominently used as a rallying cry during the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 1960s. Now, in response to the racial reckoning that unfolded in 2020, the NFL decided to include this as part of their Super Bowl programming. And so that's been the case since 2020. For the following Super Bowl in 2021, Alicia Keys performed the rendition, and it's been part of the pregame show since then. Now, it's important to keep in mind that it is performed in addition to the Star Spangled Banner and America the Beautiful. It's also performed prior to the national anthem, which is done before kickoff. This has apparently upset some conservatives, including Matt Gates and others, but and Megyn Kelly. Go ahead, Jake. Uh, where I saw it, it made it seem like that it was the only national anthem at the Super Bowl. And I'm like, yeah, there's no chance that's true, right? So of course you look into, of course they had the real national anthem, right? And what they had a second song, America the Beautiful or something like that. Oh, I don't, too many songs, who can, Gra- yeah. Grace something or other, who cares? Are we gonna play football or are we gonna sing all day? Anyway, so then you have the black national anthem, etc. no problem. Like, but the right wing made it seem like they took away the white national anthem and put in the black national anthem. No, they just sang three songs instead of one. By the way, they used to sing two instead of one. Now they sing three instead of one. But I will cap it at three, okay? So, but I will get into our actual thoughts about it in a second. Okay, so first let me give you what conservatives were saying, starting with Matt Gates, who shared an alleged exchange he had with his wife. His wife said, today is the Super Bowl, all excited and stuff, which didn't happen. That This conversation never went down. He claims he said, we aren't watching. The wife said, why? We're desecrating America's national anthem by playing something called the black national anthem. And his wife responds, does that mean Cardi B is performing? There's no, this exchange didn't happen. Like, <laughs> obviously, I don't know for sure. I'm speculating, but come on. <laughs> why are we desecrating the national anthem if we play another song after it? How does how do those two things make sense? Yeah, it, it, they don't. But anyway, so like he's bragging about I forbid my wife from watching the Super Bowl because they played something black. I got news for you: you weren't going to watch the Super Bowl. There, there's no football fan who's like I didn't like the song ahead of time, so yeah. I, I skipped the game. No. Football fans watch the Super Bowl, especially when you have two great teams. They're not like, oh, I thought her pitch was a little off. No, I'm so offended by the singing around the Super Bowl. I'm just not gonna watch it. Look, I think the faux outrage is what annoys me to no end, right? Like, oh, we're so offended and we're so outraged by this, right? No, they're are, not. <laughs> are you really outraged by it? There is no outrage here. But like, I will say this I'm gonna read one more criticism. This is the only one that had a point that I think is worth talking about. So, Representative Mike Loichik says, there's no such thing as a black national anthem. Okay, the next line is what I agree with. We're all Americans united by our great and beautiful Star Spangled Banner. Well, okay, so I don't agree with the entirety of that sentence because it's, 
again, choosing the Star Spangled Banner over whatever else, right? Like it's like, no, this is what, what we should be singing. My issue with it is we have become so fragmented as a society that we don't have a shared identity as Americans. And what I do worry about is by having a black national anthem and then the Star Spangled Banner, it's like causing weird identity divisions when we need to heal as a country and see each other as fellow Americans as opposed to black Americans, Mexican Americans, Armenian Americans, white Americans, black Americans. Like you get what I'm saying? We're Americans. Can we please come together for once? You get yeah. what I'm That's the only thing that I have. Am I outraged by the black national anthem um, being performed during the Super Bowl? No, of course I'm not offended by it. But I do think that we have increasingly over the years kind of divided ourselves into our own little identity groups. And as a result of that, we're losing our identity as Americans, that shared identity as Americans. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. Yeah, so I think that part's a little bit complicated. So I think we should all get on the same bus, to be honest. The Venga bus. I, oh my because God, are you kidding me? <laughs> if we, if that was really an option, I'm here for it. <laughs> that way. <laughs> we could all like have fun. to party. <laughs> we, like, we like to party. Okay. We like to party. <laughs> we do indeed. And that's the why. Venga bus is coming <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> jumping <laughs> from <laughs> San Francisco. Okay, sorry. So I'm if done. that had happened, then everybody would be happy. All right, look, seriously, guys. Uh, there's a reason why the Black National Anthem exists. And remember, it's just a nickname for the song. It's because of the unique history of African Americans in this country and, the, and, and it came about because of their pain and suffering, etc. And it made sense after George Floyd uh, to sing it. And, and not only that, I, I have no problem with them uh, singing it because that is a huge part of the American story, right? But we do have to draw a line somewhere, we are, we are like, like there's nothing wrong with having different holidays, whether it's fun, Cinco de Mayo, etc. There's more lighthearted. Now, you know, just at least in the way that we celebrate it, right? And having Chinese New Year and having Juneteenth, etc. That's that's not divisive. That's just different no. parts of America saying, hey, we're part of the American story as well. But yes, it's gonna get silly soon if we add four, five, eight songs before every game. Now the Asian National anthem. Now the Moldovan national anthem. <laughs> like, let's draw the line here, okay? I'm totally down with this. Star Spangled Banner, Black National Anthem, and we rap. Okay. <laughs> so so sorry to my folks, sorry to Latinos, sorry to Asians, but we're we're capping it here, okay? And so bounds the reason, guys, on both fronts, right? And look, but look at the way Matt Gates is reacting and how a lot of right wingers are reacting. Like as if to say, if you even sing something else from a group that isn't mine within this country that has so many different groups, I hate it so much, I won't touch anything associated with it. I mean, if that isn't hateful, what is? I mean, you're purposely driving that hatred right there. So, but we do have to come back together, guys, and we all have to be proud of being. Not just Turkish American, African American, whatever it might be, right? But also just being American. But we're gonna get that pride by beginning to work together again. No, exactly, I, yes, yes, right. that's what and, I want. Yeah, and being open to one another and listening to one another. And it doesn't And celebrating mean each other's stories, right? Because the, I think it's a strength of America that you have so many different people with so many different backgrounds coming together because they believe in in the American experiment, right? Like that that's an amazing story. And I think in recent decades, quite frankly, like we've just become more and more divided based on what our personal identity is. It's almost like there's a self segregating thing happening to some extent. And it used to be thought of as something that conservatives wanted, but I see it happening among the like across the political spectrum and I don't like it. Like I want again, I I want us to come together and share our identity as yeah. Americans. Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.